Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel for XPNL. Today is Saturday, the 18th of June, 2022. It's um, time for me to do my weekend Forex forecast for the upcoming week. As usual, we're going to be kicking things off with um, the, you know, by taking a look at the economical calendar. So without any further delays, let's see what we have on schedule for next week um, from an economical um, perspective. Now, um, as you guys can see here, I have filtered for high impact news and um, bank holidays and um, well, from what you can see here, obviously we don't have any um, economical releases um, scheduled on the calendar for Sunday. Um, quite light week in my own opinion, and um, that's kind of the kind of um, you know weeks that I prefer to trade, to be honest. All right. So no news on Sunday. Monday we'll have um, bank holidays here in the United States, and then um, also on Monday we have some news coming out from Australia. Um, you know later in the evening. Okay, all times are Eastern time. So these are monetary policy meeting minutes, um, 9:30 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Tuesday, we do have one high impact news, okay? Call retail sales coming out from Canada. From Canada. And um, as you can see here uh, on Wednesday, we do have CPI releases from Canada and, um, you know, British um, Axis as well. And also we have um, Fed Chair Powell testifying also on Wednesday. Now on Thursday, we do have, um, you know, the PMI data coming from Germany. Actually, we do have a lot of them coming out um, from the European axis, but I think this is just the only high impact one um, on the calendar. So I, if you take off the filter, you know, you see a lot of them with um, amber file color, all right? But probably coming out from, let's say, you know, Italy and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so, um, um, we also have on Thursday bank holidays on in you know New Zealand, and then on Friday we do have um, a speech by the um, bank governor from Australia. So um, well, quite light week, wait week in my opinion. All right, um, I like this, and uh, well, let's see how this impacts the um, charts as we go into next week. Okay, so with that out of the way now, let's take a look and see what we have on the um, charts. Now, taking a look at the, the uh, Dixie, as you can see here, for this particular week, price did give us uh, a nice push to the upside that took off this previous swing high that we have here. But then you notice that, um, you know, the bears came into these markets and succeeded in pushing the markets down, all right, and closing the markets below that previous swing high area. So, well, um, even though it's a bullish week, uh, I would also, you know, be very careful here because, as you can see here, you know, the upper week is quite um, larger than the lower week. So this qualifies like as a pin bar right now with a significant rejection to the upside. Okay, so um, the BS are probably in these markets now. In my own opinion, chances are that um, with this kind of formation, um, I won't be surprised next week if, let's say, the market gives us a little push to the upside just to form the highs and then, you know, collapse into the downside towards this daily demand zone areas. Okay, now if we take a look at the daily time frame, what do we have here? Uh, from the daily time frame, you notice that, uh, yes, um, price gave us a very nice push to the upside um, that took off this level of um, structure. Um, followed by you know, very significant and bearish days in my own opinion and uh, you notice on Friday's price action price gave us a very nice push to the upside into the weeks of um, um, the previous day's candle and you can see we're now getting some rejection so well um, let's see how it goes in my own opinion chances are the bears are going to be coming in from anywhere right around here okay for the possibility of pushing price again, again down to the downside okay towards this particular um demand zone area that we have on the daily time frame that was formed as a result of the break of this level of structure right here so um let's say 102.80 area 102.50 area anywhere from right around here the bulls might come back into this market to give us another push to the upside okay all right now um going into the four hours time frame let me see what do we have here all right so in the four hours time frame the picture is a little clearer i kind of like the price action that i'm seeing here so price gave us a very nice push to the upside all right you notice that um for a while price went into some form of um sideways consolidation okay if i draw it something of this nature all right this is like a sideways consolidation and then you notice that finally price gave us a break away from that particular size um consolidation and now we've gotten a pullback into that particular um supply zone area okay that led to the break of this level of um, structure okay the low of this range and then you notice that right now the bears are now coming back again into this market so um my personal preference okay in terms of um you know how price should move as we go into next week would be maybe let's say a little push to the upside and then from there um you know give us a very nice push to the downside into this particular um daily demand zone area that we had identified maybe towards 102.50 from where maybe the bulls might i'll be on the lookout to see if we have reversal patterns 
for maybe another push to the upside all right that's going to be my preferred course of action in dixie okay as we go into next week now um next up is going to be us dollar swiss francs now for us dollar swiss francs if we take a look at the weekly time frame well this one played out um you know almost in a textbook manner okay um well the week started off um, bullish as I had anticipated, dipped in towards parity area, actually overshot parity a little bit, but again, stayed within that particular selling origin that we had identified. And as you can see, the BS came in from that particular area. And right now we have succeeded in, you know, pushing these markets to the downside. All right. So, um, well, personally, I like this particular demand zone area right around, let's say 0 0.9400 institutional price level. Um, personally, I would like to see price give us a push, um, let's say towards this particular level. There's a possibility that price might give us maybe another push again to the upside, um, you know, towards this previous swing high areas. Okay. But um, ultimately, at least from the kind of price action that I'm seeing right now, I personally would prefer for price to give me a push towards, let's say 9,400, better still into this particular demand zone area, let's say 9,350 areas, anywhere from right around here in the longer time frames, um, then I'll, I'll be careful and start waiting for price to give me a reversal pattern for possible continuations to the upside. All right. So that's what I can see right now from the weekly time frame. Now, if we go into the daily time frame, look at this very beautiful. Okay. Look at that particular selling origin. All right which also coincides with some um, parity level and uh, you can see that the the bulls came in push price into that level and then from that supply or season area the bs came into this market and they have now pushed this market to the downside now notice that um price did not make a new high so this right here is not a demand zone all right so um even if price is to react from this level in my own opinion is going to just be maybe enough for a retracement for further continuations to the downside so for now um even if we do get any bullish reactions from this particular origins that we have here it's not a demand zone okay because it did not lead to a break of a level of structure so um, my own opinion is just probably going to be enough for a pullback for further continuations to the downside all right so in my own opinion i'm going to be keeping an eye on a possible retest of 0 0.9400 9350 areas and then anywhere from here um you know the bulls can come into these markets and start pushing this thing back again to the upside all right so let's see how that goes in the four hours time frame do i have anything to keep an eye on uh nothing in particular so well um let's see as the market develops next week okay all right that's it for us dollar swiss francs next up is going to be euro us dollar now for euro us dollar if we take a look at the um, weekly time frame um again kind of similar to what we have in the case of um dixie price gave us a push to the downside okay um pretty much just uh, tested the previous swing low all right and then from there you can see that the bulls came into this market and um you know we have a significant rejection okay we have that pin bar formation from a weekly time frame so uh well this might be enough rejection in my own opinion that would lead to maybe another push to the upside okay so uh my ultimate level here on the weekly time frame is probably right now around the 110 hundred okay so who knows are we going to get a push towards 110 okay this is my ultimate level are we going to get a push towards 110 or will this pin bar that we have in this area continue to hold price within such that maybe we get a push to the upside into these areas for further continuations to the downside nonetheless uh personally i still prefer to see you know a bullish reaction next week okay so maybe we might open the week um you know the markets from the low of the week and then from there i would like to see a bullish expansion in euro us dollar all right so let's see um some key levels to kind of keep an eye on here right now um in my own opinion will be this one right here um obviously this did not lead to a break of a structure you can see that we did not break this previous swing below right here so this is not a supply zone but it's still big enough for one to kind of keep an eye on at least for partial profits taking okay so um in my own opinion um let's see personally maybe the week opens we might get a little push to the downside from where i would expect the bulls to come into this market um keeping an eye let's say 1.0700 institutional price level area and then you know anywhere from right around here the markets might give us maybe another bearish reaction so i think 1.0700 would be a nice level to you know take profits uh partial profits if you're going to be buying off of these levels right here okay so let's see how that goes um you know in my opinion again markets can do 
do whatever if the markets open next week uh you know and start shooting to the downside and you know anytime we succeed in taking up this previous swing low that we have in this area then from there we start analyzing again and start mapping out supply zones as they form on this particular chart but for now based on the price action that i'm seeing um it's looking as if price is giving us a rejection off of this previous swing low area and then um, you notice that on thursday's price action okay gave us a very massive bullish push okay so in my own opinion there are buyers in this particular area and you can see um price gave us that push to the downside and um towards that particular area and you can see the rejection we actually got on friday off of those areas so um the bulls are in these markets right now i would like to see a bullish expansion towards let's say 1.0700 at least all right that's it for euro us dollar from the daily now if we take a look at the four hours time frame now um the picture becomes a little clearer we can now begin to map out um buying origins in this particular currency pair you can see right now um this is the level right here from where the bulls came into this market and took off all these levels of um, structures that we have in this neighborhood okay so well um this is the demand zone okay the buying origin and you can see price pretty much just tapped it to perfection right here um you can see price just tapped to the top of this particular um, zone and you can see that the bulls are now coming back into these markets now now um, the question is well maybe the markets can open next week we might get a quick push to the downside again maybe deeper into this particular um, demand zone and then from here the markets can now give us any reversal patterns i'll be looking for opportunities to go long for further continuations to the upside okay again possibly retesting um, 1.0700 institutional price level all right that's going to be my cost of action for euro us dollar as we go into next week so i prefer you know the buyers coming in with a bounce off of this particular demand zone area now again that doesn't mean that that's what must happen um in the event let's say the market opens and from here the market begins to shoot to the downside breaking this demand zone area taking off this previous um swing low area that we have here then i will reanalyze and start mapping out um supply zones as they form on our charts okay all right so that's really it for euro us dollar now let's take a look at next is um australian dollar us dollar now for Australian dollar, US dollar, if we take a look at the weekly price action, well, this particular currency pair again gave us a very quick push to the downside. Um, you know, uh, it's a bearish week, okay, second bearish week in a row. But um, again, in this case, it's not a pin bar. Yes, we did get some rejection, but you can see that the body of this candle is still quite way bigger than this lower week that we have here. Um, but again, that being said, we also have to keep in mind that we did not make a new low. Okay, we didn't take off this previous swing low. So um, something to keep in mind, maybe price is just stuck in the middle of um, nowhere at the moment. Um, possibly um, a retest of this um, buying origin that we have here that's best i can see right now but again uh we didn't really take off any significant levels so in my own opinion yes um you know we are not taking off these lows all right uh, we are bouncing off with an engulfing candle pattern in here price has given us a pullback and it's as if we are rejecting so it's very very possible that the bulls can come into this market from here but it's not the best of setups in my opinion all right so um i'm going to be staying out of this this is not the best one i'm not going to waste your time trying to analyze where the market is going to go but obviously this is my um supply zone area that i'm interested in okay and um it's very possible also that the markets might give us a possible retest or bounce off of these particular areas that we have here okay price can easily give us a push to the upside from right around here into this particular um zone i don't want to call it supply zone because we didn't lead, it didn't lead to a break of a level of structure so in my opinion price needs more action in australian dollar us dollar before i can make any um you know significant forecasts on this particular currency pair okay we are just stuck in the middle of nowhere all right so that's really it i'm not going to waste your time next up is going to be us dollar canadian dollar now for us dollar canadian dollar what do we have here now um if we take a look at the weekly time frame now finally it's as if um, the bulls are now um laying their stake in this particular currency pair and the reason i'm saying that is because if you see this level of um, resistance that we have here um you know price has finally given us a candle close above that particular level um we've barely just retested the previous swing high 
but um you know that's good enough in my opinion i like the fact that this candle is closing above this particular level so who knows maybe from here now the bulls might come into this market to flex their muscles okay but that being said um, it's very very important to keep an eye on this particular level because price is really yet to take off this level um in momentum so um keep an eye on this all roads are not yet open but it's looking more bullish than bearish at the moment okay now i'm um, taking a look at the daily time frame now um price gave us a push to the upside just enough to retest this previous swing high area and um well a little hesitation as if we are going to respect this um, selling origin area and you notice that um, on friday the bulls came back into this market massively and succeeded in pushing this market to the upside to retest this previous swing high area and in that process i think i've also mapped out a demand zone area uh in the smaller time frame um let's see what we have on the four hours time frame now four hours is not looking so beautiful right now um, but what i'm seeing in this particular currency base is a situation whereby we get a dip to the downside for further continuations to the upside okay that's kind of the price action that i'm seeing from the four hours time frame uh, now the question is are we going to be respecting this particular demand zone area that we have on the um, hourly time frame okay or is price going to overshoot it a little bit and then from there you know give us a push to the upside um personally i prefer to see this particular demand zone area hold and my reason is very simple you notice that um price gave us some consolidation in this particular area and then finally from right around here muscle to the upside taking off and breaking that level of resistance that we have on this chart and uh, right now it's a it's as if the market's about to give us um a full swing pullback all right that's what i would prefer to see so i would prefer to see a full swing pullback towards uh, let's say 129.75 area anywhere from right around this particular demand zone in my opinion is going to be a high level a high probability level that the bulls are going to come in and then wait for the shifts in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the upside okay this is going to be my preferred um price action as we go into next week in us dollar canadian dollar all right now that's really it for you card next up is going to be new zealand dollar us dollar now um new zealand dollar us dollar in my own opinion is looking more bullish um you know again you can see the price actually in this case price did take off this previous swing low all right but then you can see that we have a very massive pin but the bulls came into this market and now we are having a significant rejection now is this just a liquidity grab for maybe another nice push to the upside only time will tell but again for the fact that the bears came into this market and took off this previous swing low that we have here in my own opinion um you know i'm going to be very careful trying to aim past this particular daily supply zone area that was formed as a result of the break of this level of um, structure right here so um but personally again um from the kind of price action that we are seeing now it's looking as if the bulls are coming into this market from right around this area you can see that this particular um, on friday price gave us a dip into um the previous day's week and you can see the rejection we are getting from that particular area and then from my mappings you can see we have a demand zone in that particular area as well so what i would like to see next week maybe price opens um, we dip again into this particular demand zone area and then maybe from there um the bulls might give us an attack to the upside okay keep an eye uh you know whenever price dips into this particular daily supply zone area okay so between let's say 0 0.6450 area um 6500 areas anywhere from right around here um the bears can come into this market any shifts in the smaller time frame i'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside at least for a possible retest of these previous swing low areas that we have here okay all right so um that's really it from the um daily now if we take a look at the um hourly time frame actually in the four hours time frame um you notice that it's looking like a head and shoulders reversal pattern actually this pair is moving in a textbook manner to be completely honest with you all right so you can see right here this is the previous supply zone area and then from here we had um like this inverted head and shoulders all right and uh, price from here gave us a very massive push to the upside which um, kind of got terminated as price approached this particular supply zone that we had on the four hours time frame all right but then right now what do we have price has given us that pullback okay towards that particular um, demand zone area that led to the break of this level of structure and you can see that the bulls are now coming back into this market slowly but surely so the question now in my opinion is this um well will this level hold okay um actually um the demand zone area on the um, hourly time frame is sitting right here i must have labeled this um incorrectly okay right here not here okay 
So this is the demand zone area, okay, that led to the break of this level of structure. And you notice that price has given us a pullback to just basically tap the top of that particular demand zone area and you can see that the bulls are now coming back into this market again so well the question now is um very possibly markets can give us a push to the downside upon markets open all right into this particular demand zone area again and then from here um if we get any shifts in the markets in the smaller time frame i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside okay towards that um supply zone that we have identified on the daily charts okay uh, all right that's going to be my preferred course of action now being that it's my preferred course of action does not mean that the market must go bullish all right so again like i have always said in the event let's say the market opens and the market just continues to shoot to the downside without respecting this demand zone area uh, without respecting this previous swing lows then upon the you know upon that kind of a movement in the market it just makes sense that the bears are now in this market and we have to now start identifying new supply zones that form uh, as we you know along the way to the downside okay all right so that's pretty much um, what i'm seeing right now in new zealand dollar us dollar now next up is going to be british pounds and us dollar okay now for a cable uh, if we go into the um the weekly charts okay again quite similar you notice how price gave us some um, very nice push to the downside okay this one clearly took off this previous swing low but pay attention and notice that how this particular currency pair um, gave us a very significant rejection as well okay you see that the bulls really came in from the lows of um the week and succeeded in pushing this markets to the upside closing this candle way above the lows of this particular swing the previous swing low right so this is obviously a pin bar that can easily be followed maybe with a bullish week um you know in the in, it's coming next week okay so um let's see how it goes now if we go into the daily time frame obviously this is a supply zone right here that led to the break of this level of um, structure all right but again you see that the bulls have come in okay you can see these two bullish days massive bullish days and um well right now what i would like to see in this particular currency pair is let's say the markets open we form the low of the week okay uh maybe maybe not even the low of the week or let's say we get price to give us a push to the downside into this particular um, demand zone area and then from here i would like to see the bulls come into this market towards this particular daily supply zone that we have identified okay let's say 124 50 12500 area maybe 12500 will be preferred now from here in my own opinion uh if we get any shifts in the smaller time frames i'll also be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside all right so yes this is a valid supply zone and uh, well it's very possible that we can get this push to the upside um right around from this particular demand zone areas that we have on the smaller time frames okay so now let's take a look at the four hours time frame and see what we have here so yes so this is the particular demand zone i'm talking about you can see this is obviously a very beautiful inverted head and shoulders okay you can see the inverted head and shoulders right here and um, this is the demand zone that led to the break of the neckline of that head and shoulder okay this level of um, structure and uh, well what i would love to see right now um, when market opens next week is for price to give us a push to the downside to dip into this particular demand zone area maybe 121.50 institutional price level okay anywhere from 121.50 and then anywhere from here if we get any market shifts to the upside i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long as you know for further continuations to the upside into this particular demand zone area that we have on the um, daily charts okay from where if we get a shift in the smaller time frame again i'll be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside all right so that's pretty much um, what i can see right here in um, cable as we go into next week now um next up is going to be us dollar japanese yen now um us dollar japanese yen if we take a look at the weekly time frame um you can see that the previous two weeks that we have here very massive price action but then earlier this week you can see that um, we actually sold out for a bit and um price actually approached this previous um swing high area and then we bounced off in momentum closing this week um a bullish pin bar now um the question here is very simple uh, well will we get uh, a further continuation you know like a pin bar and then a massive push again to the upside okay who knows um only time we tell or let's say are we going to get a deeper price action um a deeper retracement from here 
um, maybe towards this particular demand zone that we have on the daily, maybe right around 130, 100 institutional price level. Okay, so this is a tricky con um, formation right now um, based on the location of this pin bar. Okay, so sometimes this could be like um, a, ra a rally based rally formation. Okay, and in that case, we'll be expecting more, you know, bullish continuation. Or is it going to be just, uh, you know, price kind of rolling out of steam and then for a possible turnaround? Okay, I can't even remember. I know this candle pattern has a name. This one, two, three candle pattern has a name, but I can't remember that. Okay, that's not important for me. Now, um, let's see what happens as we narrow down into the daily time frame. Now, in the daily time frame, you notice that um, I do have this level right here, um, right around um, 130, 100 institutional price level. Okay, this is the demand zone that led to the break of this level of structure. So I really like to see price give me a retest of this particular demand zone right before we get that massive push to the upside okay but if you notice you notice that um the yen crosses really have not been pulling back to demand zones um or supply zones on this move to this particular on to the upside okay so um who knows okay that's going to be my preferred action okay that's part of my plan is to wait for price to pull back into demand zones in an uptrend so um if we take off from here uh, from current prices then uh, well we we'll fell shy of this particular demand zone again and um, you know the yen will continue to behave like the yen but right now what I would prefer to see is for the bears to come into this market from anywhere right around here and um, give us a push to the downside into this demand zone area that we have on the um, daily charts from where I would like to see the bulls coming to this market in momentum for further continuations to the upside that is going to be my preferred course of action okay keyword is preferred okay because price from here can easily just uh you know give us a little retracement upon market open and then boom we take off this previous swing high okay um the only time i'm really going to get bullish in this particular currency pair is um whenever price begins to comfortably trade above these previous swing highs that we have right around 135 um 60 levels okay that's um the only time i'm going to be looking for bullish opportunities okay so now um if we take a look at the um you know this really small time frame i think that's where i have this particular demand zone okay so well you can notice that um if i plot if i draw this line okay if i draw this line here so this was some significant level of our resistance on our charts okay and finally you know we muscled to the upside and took off that particular level of our resistance and created this demand zone in the process okay so well um if the bulls are going to come into this market the chances are we are not going to be trading below this particular um, level right here okay so that means uh, maybe from here maybe 134.50 um, structure change in a smaller time frame and then we take off that previous swing high and we continue to the upside okay then in that case that means the weekly candle will now look like a rally based rally formation okay but in the event that let's say the market opens next week and um, for some reason we just um, don't really respect this particular demand zone area and we get let's say a massive break of that particular demand zone area then in my own opinion this might be an indication that the bears are going to be coming into this market and we might be seeing a possible retest of uh, that 130 hundred level that we have identified okay so um, these are kind of the things I would like to see as we go into next week in this particular currency play because in that case uh, if we if the market begins to collapse to the downside, then that means that price would just have succeeded in pulling back into this particular selling origin area from where maybe we might now get uh, a nice push to the downside into this demand zone area that we have on the daily time frame. OK, so I just wanted um, to kind of point out the things that I'm looking at, OK, that, that I'm keeping an eye on in this particular currency pair. All right. So that's really it for US dollar Japanese yen. Now, the next one is going to be GJ. OK, this is going to be the last of the majors that I'll be looking at. OK, now this pair is quite um, confusing using for me at this moment so i'm really going to say that and put that out there now you can see that and um, we did get a very nice push to the upside um you know we took off this previous swing high so that looks as if the bulls are in this market obviously and then you see that for this particular week 
we got a very significant push to the downside okay and um that's not really surprising because you notice um even though we did take off these highs in this particular candle you notice that we got some significant um selling pressure okay um in you know last week so the bears also continued with that particular selling pressure this week but then as we dipped into this particular demand zone areas you notice that the bulls came into this market again because succeeded in pushing these markets all the way towards the almost towards the open of the week okay creating this massive pin bar right so right now price in my own opinion is in the middle of nowhere okay and um, when I, I say that very very carefully okay now personally my my preferred course of action is going to be let's say for the bs to come back again into these markets um you know for further continuations to the downside okay at least taking off the week of this particular candle and then maybe from anywhere right around here we might get that push to the upside okay that's going to be my preferred course of action in this play but again like i said this is a yen cross so you know it's not really been respecting demand and supply zones of recent so um it's not really looking to the upside it's not looking to the downside either okay because of the pin bar now um that means the only time that we're really going to get a clear signal here is going to be let's say when price begins to clearly begin to take off these previous swing high areas that we have here but again that will be very much um you know a dip in the week and um yeah well let's see how that goes in my opinion there are more there are better opportunities in other currency pairs right at this particular moment if we go into the daily time frame you see exactly what the market has done okay you can see that um price gave us that push to the upside and uh, just weakening above that particular previous swing high creating this demand zone in the process all right so this is the demand zone and you notice that some um, price gave us that push the downside into this demand zone and you see that bulls are coming into these markets okay so um in the middle of nowhere right now i need more um action in this particular currency pair before i can make any um trading decisions okay but um yes that's that's really it i'm not really going to say much right now for the for me to be bullish in this particular currency pair then uh chances are maybe intraday let's say if the market gives us some um, formations in the intraday then i might look for demand zones to the upside but ultimately it will be interesting okay i'll prefer to see price begin to take off this previous swing high area from where that will be green lights to search searching for long opportunities in this particular currency pair all right now another possibility is let's say the markets give us a push to the downside okay but again like i said we can get that push to the downside uh maybe 160 50 area 160 100 this pair has been quite volatile so i'll really be careful okay if we get a push to the downside again um without taking off this previous swing low and then let's say from here we begin to get a market shift in the smaller time frame then i might look for opportunities to go long off of this bounce for a possible push to the upside towards the previous swing high okay but again like i said i believe there are better opportunities elsewhere all right so that's really it for the uh, majors now i do have one um pair okay euro pounds that is really looking nice okay um this might be a trade i might take early next week okay that i just wanted to share with you guys so from what i can see here you can see that this pair um like i told you guys this pair is is looking bullish okay and um, we are I, I do believe we are now you know starting that bullish move let me see do we even have a channel here maybe we do let's see so we do have a trend line here um that's nice um i i'm just actually seeing this right now believe it or not so um we do have some form of um channel here in my own opinion so this is the channel that we are trading in right now on the daily charts okay so you notice that um this is the first um the third bounce or the second bounce off of that particular trend line and it's deep inside the demand zone that we have on the daily chart okay this demand zone that led to the break of these levels of um, structures that we have here so well um we did get that sell out and then on friday you notice that the bulls are now coming in um into this particular market so in my own opinion uh, right now i'm seeing that bullish move uh, maybe early next week depending on where the market opens if we begin to get less a pullback i'll be looking for opportunities to go long in this particular currency pair for further continuations to the upside okay that's kind of um the kind of a price action that i would like to see in euro pounds as we go into next week all right guys um that's going to be it for my forecast for this um, upcoming week um hopefully you gain some value from this particular video and if you did guys please do not forget to click on that like button all right subscribe to the channel and um click on the notification bell so that you always get updates whenever i post a video thank you very much and um see you next week most importantly have a profitable trading week ahead bye bye